Hey, in this video, I'll show you how the FIGAF testing works for SAP CPI and what we can do with it. The goal with it is to make sure that you are testing your SAP PI based integration a lot more and know what are the differences that are coming um, without having to build anything from scratch. And all of this is made without you having to code anything. So the first thing is that you would select the iFlow that you want to look at and we'll sec select this one. We will specify record messages. We will add it to a test case or we could create a, a new test case for it. So we have already created a test case. So test case is, you probably want to create a test case for different processes. So we'd have one for um, finance, sales, or maybe specific business related processes uh, where you have multiple iFlows together. Um, we can add message data into it. We can specify how many messages we want for this. And we can also extract partner information with XPath um, to get the real data that we need as a part of this processing. Um, for now, we don't need to do that. We will create it here. And now we have a list of all the, the different things we want to create recordings on. So what we want to do now is we want to start the recording and what that will do is it will switch the iFlow into trace mode. Once it's in trace mode, you will wait until someone sends a message through this interface. And once the user have done that, you can pull the messages and this will then pull all the different um, values that you have in it and it, the from the trace and obviously that can take a little while depending on how many messages you have uh, and the size and stuff like that. So right now we can see we received one message in and 35 out. So if when we can go in and we can drill the, see the details of this, we can view the message, what type of message it is, all data of it, and we can change data into it if you want to. Um, and we have, can see all the different steps that we have in the outbound message or in the flow here. So now we can create a test case. We simply do that just by clicking on this plus button and we can specify on which system do we normally want to run this and we only want to select it on our main system. So now we have created a test case and let's just delete the other one. We don't need to more test cases at least for this but obviously you want some for all the different scenarios that you have and you know that they're different uh, so right now we can do uh, we can run this and to run it we simply select here either run or run on a specific system if you want to run it on something that is not the, the standard system that we have and once we run it, it will switch the iFlow into trace mode. It will send the message in to this iFlow and make sure that it runs. And obviously, if you have scenarios, for instance, that starts with a, with something you cannot control, like a schedule trigger or an iDoc, some type of adapter we do not support, it will instead create a mock of that iFlow, a copy of that iFlow, ensure that you all time can create copies or maintain and make sure it works. And once you have done that, it will then uh, send the message into that one and it will process the recording the same way. So instead of testing with the original iFlow, it will just create a copy, maintain, make sure that everything is, is copied and configured the same way. So now we've run it. We can pull the messages and this works the same way. It will download all the data that you have. Uh, and yeah, uh, also depending on the number of messages, this will take a little while. Um, and here we can see all the different runs that we have, or the last run we have here, we can see the all the runs that we have had in, in totally with this. And if we view the results here, we can see, hmm, there's actually a lot of errors in it, so let's go check it out. We have a diff here, and the diff allows us to see what are the different messages that we have in this, and we can see if there was any changes in the, the XML here, we would be able to see it pretty quickly. So you can see here, application ID is a value that changed. We can just by clicking here, ignore it. 
then it will not compare those values and I think let's just took one of the last one uh, here here we can see there's some expires um, there's the application ID there's the date and obviously you want to go through these and check if if it's okay that these changes from time to time then we have an option here to say hey do a full comparison with all these data and then let's see if there's any more errors on these things and it obviously needs to be done with this. Um, we can see expires, it should be the same thing. So sometime it just take a little while to run all the different comparisons that we have. So it should all be good. And let's just do it again. So now it seems like everything is successful and everything works as, as we expect it to do. Um, so that was how you can create it. Um, if you for some reason want to, let's say we, we do some changes in it, um, we can change the test case, we can view the test case, we can make modification into it. So let's just check any of these uh, parts here. Uh, if we wanted to make modification in it, so let's edit, add a text string here. So if we then run the test again, obviously you probably, yeah, it could be something you want to do if you want to make sure that um, for some cases this is what we would expect and this is what we will see. Um, and then obviously, or hopefully, you'll see that this bounces out as an, an error in this case. Um, and this shows you how easy it is to create test cases, manage, edit, uh, and, and run them. So let's just wait until it's got all the different messages for it. Now it's done. And it will then do the comparison of these things. And we can then see there's a difference here, we can view the diff here, and we can see we, we changed this and we got this value instead. Um, so in order for us to, to say, okay, next time this is what we will have, we can just mark the test case and we can update this. So next time we're running, this is the demo for is the value we're expecting in this. So this really shows how simple it is to, to change these things and test it. If we look at the testing configuration, one other thing that we have that is really crucial here uh, is uh, this do not use original communication or receiver communication, but use mock endpoints. And this is really important if you're using or want to test something where you have success factors as part of it. Uh, where you, for instance, want to say, okay, I want to create a cost or an employee and test all the scripts working around that. If you create an employee multiple times, it will just say, hey, we this cost employee is already created. We don't want him again. And then you'll have to figure out a way to, to go around and test these things. So if I run the test now, one of the things that we'll see is that it will start deploying a system. So let's go to the CPI system we have. Oh. Let me just look in. So what we can actually see now is that we have one that's starting. Let's check this out. This is then this VGAF mock demo and we can see here it's using a new specific endpoint if we view let me just take it from the normal so let's just go over here to the normal viewer so if we look at the these different knife flows we can see we got one here it has this endpoint normally if we look at the view integration flow we can see that this I flow all the the artifacts over here we have O data connections that it's using for this testing and yeah we cannot guarantee that these data can always be the same and that is why we have created this uh, this different approach for it where you can then when you're viewing this 
it will instead of this it will just use an HTTP endpoint where it's calling the GAF site for this uh, CPI mock test data and will get the data for the specific step with the correlation and header and everything like that and you can specify which when you're starting configuring the ERT tool you specify which cloud connector to use and stuff like that and with that it's able to send the data to the real or the FGAF tool and it will get the data back and forth and then once the iFlow has been deployed successfully you will then see that it is being triggered so now we can see here it was triggered uh, we've got the, the different data here and if we look at it in our test case so we have a lot of different ways we can go into this test case runs we can then view the results it's probably a little premature because it's not there yet we can pull the messages in this and with that it works just the same way uh, some challenge may be that there could be uh, different settings we're not setting it the same way it's like different HTTP headers and stuff like that that comes around in the processing so most likely if you start with using this this process you will need to just go through and add these uh, X frame content types um, more also um, and then we can run the comparison again and hopefully it will be successful now and just give it a few seconds Ah, so here we've got some different ones that were sent. And concept type. And obviously some of these headers can be a little challenging. Configure. Uh, skip only successful. That is a little easier to, to faster to, to con run the comparison on. And maybe one day for more here. I think these will also should also be included in it. So um, now you can see it's pretty easy to go through, manage these things, create test cases, um, and then every time you make a change to the iFlow, it will see, hey, there's actually been a change to it. It will run the same test case, and you can see how it goes. So one of the other challenges may be that you actually have some Groovy scripts in this so here we have our we'll go to our agent objects we have our agent test cases and one of the things is we ha here we have all the different uh, data entered one thing we have here is we have this generate uh, Groovy script test data and the idea about this is now you are created a test case, you know this is something that has some business meaning, something you want to do. And if you want to test and validate the, the iFlow, you just say add to git repository. And we have a git repository that we'll see shortly. And the idea is that we want to make it as easy as possible for developers to develop and they should not need to care about setting up these different things. Um, and the idea is here it will commit this to the git repository and let me go to the git repository so here we have the git repository uh, there's a lot more in the devops video about this uh, git repository so we'll just go here update uh, rebase and with that we should hopefully be able to see here we can see the git what were the, the, the things that were changed? Um, and the thing we will then add is in this file. Here we will add in, so here for instance we have in and output data for a specific test case. 
So here we can see for as for all Groovy scripts, you will see this is the input, the output, and the body of this, and then it will add a standard way you can run this. You can and you can run this and everything like that is something that is delivered as a part of this repository. It takes two minutes to set up and then you can actually run it. Uh, and you can see if the, if the scripts you have still work the same way, if there's any challenges with it. And all of this is without you as a user have to do anything, making it really possible for everybody to create test cases, to run them and make sure they, they work successfully. I hope you saw some of the power of what the FIGAV uh, testing tool can do with regards to SAP CPI testing. Also recommend checking out the, the full DevOps solution that covers a lot more than this. So uh, thanks for watching.